So far, the USFL has not publicized who their players are going to be going into tomorrow's draft, and that has led to a lot of speculation. Players have been posting on social media that they are a part of the draft pool, so I thought it would be fun to go over the four big name quarterback names in the draft pool so far, and one wild card that could send shockwaves not just through spring football, but also the college football world as well. If you like this video and want more quarterback or USFL player focused videos, let me know in the comment section below. I got most of these names from a piece written by Mike Mitchell from XFL News Hub that I have linked in the description below. Luis Perez's backstory deserves its own video and to this day is one of my favorite stories. He played two years of junior varsity football in high school, but after constantly being moved around by his coaches, he decided to stop playing. Inside the attend a community college where he walked onto the Southwestern college football team with no high school film and no experience at the high school level. He came in as a quarterback being the ninth player on the depth chart and the coaches recommended him to change his position, but he refused. Due to injuries and transfers, he would become the starting quarterback by the third week of the season and started putting up big numbers before getting hurt and returned the following season, leading the team to the conference championship. Perez would not earn a Division I scholarship and instead enrolled at Texas A&M Commerce, a Division II school in Northeast Texas. He would redshirt his first year before taking over the starting job and having a strong season being a Harlan Hill Award nominee, the Heisman Trophy of Division II. The following year, he led the Lions to win the Division II National Championship and won the Harlan Hill Trophy. He finished his career throwing for 8,327 yards, 78 touchdowns and 16 interceptions, in two years putting together a 22-3 record as a starter. He would go undrafted in the 2018 NFL Draft, but was signed by the Los Angeles Rams and later released. He then would sign with the AAF, playing for the Birmingham Iron, helping them clinch a playoff berth before the season was suspended. He would then be signed and waived by both the Eagles and Lions before joining the XFL, originally being allocated to the Los Angeles Wildcats. After the Wildcats signed Josh Johnson, Perez would be traded to the New York Guardians. Perez impressed in the XFL, leading the New York Guardians into playoff contention before the season was cut short. He then played in the Spring League, leading the Jousters to the championship game. He is one of the more intriguing players with Mike Mitchell from XFL News Hub writing, Luis Perez will be an asset to any team in the USFL. Coaches will love him, not only is he a hard worker and humble, but Perez is only 27 years old and still has upside and he's had tough luck in his development. Based on the confirmed list of names thus far, Perez is worthy of a first round pick in my opinion. I've become a huge fan of Luis Perez over the years and hope he is able to put up big numbers in the USFL. He has played in every spring league and is also a professional level bowler. The next guy I want to talk about is a player you may have never heard of before today and that is Brian Scott. Brian is far from a household name when it comes to his football career but he is someone who has made a name for himself in the spring football leagues and has developed a cult following. Scott played college football at Division III Occidental College becoming the career leader for multiple passing categories. He was a four year starter throwing for 9,073 yards, 77 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. In 2014, Scott led the U-19 national football team to a gold medal finish in the IFAF World Championship in Kuwait and earned MVP honors. Since leaving Occidental College, he has been on the roster for the BC Lions and Edmonton Eskimos of the CFL while also working out for some NFL teams. After the CFL decided to cancel their 2020 season, Scott decided to opt out of his contract and join the Spring League where he would be drafted by the Generals. He'd win the starting quarterback job beating out former NFL quarterback Zach Bettenberger and leading the Generals to an undefeated season in the 2020 championship. He was the only player to throw for 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns in the four-game Spring League season and earn the MVP award. In February of 2021, he worked out for the Indianapolis Colts who would not be given an opportunity. Ryan is a strong-armed quarterback that could be a name to watch. Mike Mitchell from XFL News Hub writes, Some of the USFL's coaches have seen Scott's talents firsthand. It would not surprise me if Philly Stars coach Bart Andrus drafts him. Chase Litton is a prototypical pro-style pocket passer standing at 6'5 and weighing 230 pounds. Coming out of high school, Chase originally committed to USF before decommitting and deciding he would not sign with the school during the 2014 National Signing Day and would instead attend a prep school and reclassify to the class of 2015. Then he would decide not to attend the prep school and instead committed to Marshall during the 2014 class. During his freshman year, he would not be the opening day starter but took over the role during the third game of the season, finishing the year throwing for 2,605 yards and 23 touchdowns, which was a Marshall freshman record. 
he would have relatively the same amount of success as a sophomore and threw for 3,115 yards and 25 touchdowns as a junior. After his junior season, Linton surprised everyone by declaring for the 2018 NFL Draft, where he would go undrafted. Over the next few seasons, he would spend time with the Kansas City Chiefs and Jacksonville Jaguars before being released from the Jags practice squad. He then chose to sign with the XFL, where he was allocated to the Seattle Dragons, later being traded to the Tampa Bay Vipers. He struggled to break through and impress for both teams and would be released before the season was ended due to the events of 2020. Mike Mitchell from XFL News Hub writes, The 26-year-old Litton has tools to get a shot in the USFL, but the likelihood is that he will need to earn playing time first, something that despite his favorable traits, he hasn't been able to accomplish to this point. Before I go over the last player I had originally planned to talk about, I do want to mention former Last Chance U star, DeAndre Johnson, who will also be a part of the draft pool. Johnson started his career at Florida State before being dismissed and transferring to Eastern Mississippi Community College, where he completed 61% of his passes for 2,645 yards and 26 touchdowns and also rushed for 834 yards and 5 touchdowns on the ground, leading EMCC to the MACJC Championship and the Mississippi State Bowl State Championship. He would also start in Season 2 of Last Chance U during that time period. He would sign with Florida Atlantic but missed the 2017 season with blood clots in his arm. After only playing in cleanup duty in 2018, Johnson would transfer to Texas Southern, an FCS program where he threw for 1,927 yards, 10 touchdowns and 5 interceptions, while also rushing for 3 more touchdowns on the ground. He would go on to become a quarterback coach after going undrafted in the 2020 NFL Draft. He would play in the Spring League where he would impress with his strong arm and speed. If Johnson gets the right coaching, he could be a star in the USFL. Now the last name I want to talk about is a long shot and the only guy not confirmed for the SFL draft on this list and I wanted to have a little fun talking about the idea that Jaden Daniels could possibly be on his way to the USFL. Again, this is extremely unlikely but if the USFL wants to make a major splash this could be a quarterback that could get people talking. Originally, Daniels said he was going to stay at Arizona State earlier this winter but recently decided to enter the transfer portal a few days ago. He is followed by the USFL's head of player personnel, which was before he entered the transfer portal. USFL has come out and said they are willing to recruit players from the transfer portal to come to their league and the timing of Daniels entering the transfer portal is really interesting with most college semesters already starting and five days before the USFL draft. The likely reason for him entering the transfer portal right now is the fact that Arizona State is under NCAA investigation and we are seeing coach after coach either resign or get fired due to the possibility of illegal recruiting. Maybe Daniels got an inkling of what is going to happen to the Sun Devils program and tried to get out now and find his next landing spot before that all happens, which could be anywhere from the likes of Cal, Washington, and maybe even Wisconsin among other schools. If Daniels were to come to the USFL, the league would have a key young figure for the first season and possibly beyond. But for Daniels, it may be a huge leap of faith that could cost him future NFL opportunities if he does not perform to a high standard. USFL fans, I would not be holding your breath on this one. I just wanted to have a little fun including this name and talking about why it could make sense. What do you think? Which quarterback are you most excited to watch during the first season of the USFL? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video, make sure to check out my video on how the USFL draft is going to work right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.